Why is Singapore so dang rich? Because they have otters. <coughs> and I'm gonna leave you at that. Actually, it's maybe because they have money. Because you know what rich means? Having a lot of money. I think the merlion actually produces money. So you're saying if you drink the water. Hey, it's fresh. We learned that last video. It's not ocean water, it's fresh water. We did, we did. So we're hitting up the merlion when we go back. Guys, we'll be posting our recent Singapore vlog actually at the beginning of January. So if you want to check that out, make sure to go subscribe to our travel vlog channel. Link in the description and link in the pinned comment. First impressions of Singapore. We were shocked. Most modern city in the world. What? This is Asia? What? What? Our first and only impression of Singapore? <laughs> Let's check this out. We're going to learn some more about the dang wealth in Singapore. Here we go. A tiny country. So tiny you can drive across the island in just an hour. Despite its traffic. size and lack of natural resources, Singapore's 5.6 million people enjoy one of the highest average incomes in the world, ahead of countries like Germany, France, and Japan. So, wow. how did this little island get so rich? Money. Because they have a cruise ship on top of a building. Singapore doesn't have resources like coal or oil, but it does have something countries can't buy. Flower location. towers? The island oh. sits in the middle of an important trade route, connecting Asia to Europe. That's a key reason why the British decided, back in 1819, to set up a colony in Singapore. Location isn't everything, though. There are several countries nearby that could have made use of their whereabouts, but they weren't quite as successful. That's because there are other ingredients that go into this crazy rich Singapore recipe. I'm at the Raffles Hotel, which is one of the most prominent icons of Singapore's colonial history. Unlike some of its neighbors, which wanted to separate themselves from their colonial histories, Singapore kept close ties with Britain, even after independence in 1965. That decision announced to the rest of the world that Singapore was open for business. That's important because we know now that exports help to grow and expand an economy. But back then, it wasn't conventional wisdom. Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea became known as the four Asian tigers, which have grown rapidly since the 1960s. Their rise was fueled by exports, oh. industrialization, and more crucially, big doses of government intervention. Oh. I thought they got rich out of ice cream. Lame. This was especially true for Singapore. Labor strikes were common on the island in the 1960s, even with high unemployment. On top of that, there was a housing in the 1960s. The guy just is like, get this thing off me! <laughs> that rolled far through. There was a housing this crisis, with Singapore Dang. being home to one of the largest slum settlements in the world. So Whoa. how do you build a more disciplined labor to force to attract investment? So interesting that that was in Hong Kong too, one of the yep. largest slums. Both of these cities that are like insanely rich now were slums at one point, massive. Not, not even that long ago too, and Korea was very similar to that too. That is called productivity. Good job, Singapore. Well, you give them something to work for, like a house of their own, which is why one of the first Singapore government agencies set up was focused on building affordable public housing. While just 9% oh, of the US population lived in public housing in the 1960s. What do you mean the biggest economy in the world? They don't have money for that. <sighs> Come on, they can just live in tents. Why do they need a house? That figure stands at more than 80% today. Add in greater employer rights and strikes became extremely rare. At the same time, the government attracted foreign investment through tax incentives, growing the economy and easing unemployment which fell from an estimated 14% in 1959 to 4.5% in the 1970s. Wow. By the 1980s, Singapore was a regional manufacturing hub, and it was the world's biggest producer of hard disk drives. But today, <laughs> manufacturing makes up only about 20% of Singapore's GDP. Take a look at Singapore's SSDs. growth in True. GDP. You can see two big surges, wow. one beginning in the late 80s and another at the start of the new millennium. Ironically, That's Singapore massive. has a downturn to thank for that. You see, in 1985, Singapore went into its first post-independence recession, prompting the government to introduce new measures. State-owned companies like telecommunications were privatized to make them more competitive. Then, at the turn of the century, service industries like finance and insurance were further liberalized. 
that openness helped to grow the share of services from just 24% of GDP in 1985 to more than 70% in 2017. Multinational companies began to set up regional headquarters in Singapore. That My favorite multinational company is this Ferris wheel multinational company. They put them everywhere. They do. I mean, they're literally in every big tourist spot. They got one in Hong Kong right on the thing, too. They're Dubai, everywhere. London. Wow. Very multinational. Heck yeah. That attracted even bigger big players, Ferris wheel. boosting Singapore's attractiveness to corporates and in turn, its GDP. Now, Singapore is ranked as one of the world's easiest places to do business. <laughs> That's funny that Georgia is on there. True. The bureaucracy in Georgia is just so low. That's so interesting, Georgia. But it's, it's a country we lived in for a few months, so it's funny to see it in there because it's not very well known. I mean, we literally bought a car in Georgia and it was not that hard. It's like the only car place we could buy a car as a foreigner without like needing anything. We didn't even need like an IDP. And then we barely used it and spent a ton of money on it. And now it's just sitting there and we don't know if it's been sold or not. And we don't know if we'll ever get the money back for it. Anyways, <laughs> I have an answer on why we aren't so rich. <laughs> Singapore has been praised for transforming itself from a developing to developed economy. But do most Singaporeans feel rich? Well, not exactly. Two of the most important reasons, the high cost of living and inequality. For five years in a row, Singapore has been named the world's most expensive city, ahead of New York Eesh. and London. That's largely because of taxes on cars, making Singapore the most expensive place in the world to buy and run an automobile. It's also the third most expensive place on earth to buy clothes. But really? personal care, household goods, and domestic help in Singapore tend to be less expensive than in other major cities. While Singapore is rich in terms of GDP per capita, We're the median monthly the salary is $3,270. That doesn't sound too bad, but about 20% of that goes into a mandatory savings account. You can oh, use that account to pay for medical bills, housing, and education, but it does restrict the purchasing power of the population. You probably heard of the movie Crazy Rich Asians, which was set here in Singapore. And it's no wonder because Singapore has about 184,000 millionaires, making it what? truly the land of the... Out of 5 million? Is that the highest percentage? Has to be, right? Well, for a country, I would assume so. Has to be. The only thing that would be there is Hong Kong, but Hong Kong wouldn't, I don't think. That's crazy. Oh. The crazy rich. That's great news. But Singapore also has a fairly high rate of inequality compared with other developed countries. Let's look at the Gini coefficient, which is a scale used to calculate inequality, Pretty with zero being the most equal and one being the least. So Singapore's the most equal, Gini I would assume, would be something like Denmark or Norway, Norway Iceland. Gini coefficient, after accounting for taxes and transfers. Oh, USA. Gosh, that's bad was 0.356 in 2017. That was worse than countries like the United Kingdom, Japan, Korea, and Germany. Although it fared better than some, like the United States. Is that number really that bad? The US is that rough. question had books like this flying off the shelves. A think tank ignited public debate on the divide in social classes after it found that on average, Singaporeans who live in public housing have fewer than one friend who lives in private housing. The government has called the issue of inequality a national priority. But it remains to be seen if it is a problem that can be tackled effectively. So I wonder how differently the income inequality is affected by the fact that it's such a small country basically like a city-state. I wonder what that means. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would mean there's, like the U.S. is really, there's massive income inequality, but you can move to places that are significantly cheaper, whereas Singapore, you can't. So it's all going to be, I'm sure there's areas that are less expensive, but it's still this little area of Singapore where everything's expensive. And typically, a city is going to be richer than the countryside of a country. So when it's just all a city for the country, you'd expect that all to be richer, but I guess the in in inequality is still there. I would assume, too, that uh, one of the reasons why uh, the 
inequality is so high is because the uh, ease of business, which usually means like they, the businesses are less regulated and stuff like that. They're cutting that. some corners. Yeah. Paying a little, uh, paying some people less than they need to. So then they can, choo, 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 and then, yeah. I mean, just because a country has a lot of millionaires doesn't necessarily mean it's successful. Luxembourg, well, I didn't see, I don't know how many millionaires Luxembourg has, but it everybody makes a lot of money there. Yeah, the, like the highest. You were talking about millionaires, but what about billionaires? U.S. most successful country because of billionaires. Thank you, Elon. Very, Very epic. epic. <laughs> Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Let us know other Singapore stuff down in the comments below. Please do. Bye.